With less than a week before the start of our historic eight-game COVID-shortened Michigan and Big Ten football season, I'm sprinting down uh, towards the finish line of my preseason discussion of the Wolverines position groups and uh, the coaching staff. In this video, I want to uh, discuss the defense and uh, our projected special teams. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Anwar Youssef Dunbar, and this is Big Discussions 76 Sports. First of all, please like this video, please share it, and please subscribe to my channel. Well, I'm back with uh, one more discussion of the Wolverines uh, 2020 position groups. Uh, kickoff up at uh, Minnesota is less than a week away and I want to squeeze in one more video about the coaching staff and uh, just in general what to look out for uh, this season after I've gone over all of the position groups but in this video I want to discuss uh, the defense and then just briefly uh, what's predicted for the defense and the special teams um, Unlike with the offense, I'm not going to go through position group by position group, player by player uh, for time purposes. Um, and instead, I'm going to refer to, for both the defense and the special teams, I'm going to refer to two articles that I found, which I think uh, summarize uh, those uh, those phases of the game. Um, and, and again, I think as I'll describe when I, uh, in my video regarding the coaching staff, I think a lot of this is going to uh, hinge on the offense regarding how this season goes, which during Jimmy's tenure, surprisingly has been the group uh, that has been the most uh, up and down. So first of all, your eyes are not deceiving you. You are looking at a Michigan shirt with Chinese characters. When I was a student in Ann Arbor, when I was in graduate school, I walked by a shop on uh, South Main. Uh, I believe that's South Main. Is it South Main or North Main? Over there near Mongolian Barbecue, and uh, there was another Chinese restaurant over there. Oh, Kai Garden. Kai Garden was my second favorite Chinese restaurant in Ann Arbor behind China Gate. China Gate was my, my go-to Friday night dinner um, um, when I would leave the lab on most Fridays when I was a graduate student at the University of Michigan. Uh, my go-to meal at China Gate was the curry chicken, and my number two was the uh, chicken chop suey. And, funny story, it got to a point where every time I walked into China Gate, I was so regular, they knew what I wanted. They knew I was probably going to order the curry chicken and an egg drop soup. And even when I go back to Ann Arbor today, many of the same waitresses who were there 15 to 20 years ago are still there and they still recognize me. Isn't that cool? <laughs> anyway, um, so I, there, there was a, a shop on South Main near Mongolian Barbecue and it had Michigan t-shirts with the block M and uh, go blue in uh, numerous and various uh, languages and I thought it would be cool to pick up one they had them in African and Arabic and Chinese and Japanese and I I wanted to get the Chinese one so this says go blue uh, uh, in Chinese so uh, with that 
Um, I'm going to share uh, the article on the defense uh, that I found um, in voiceover format with a little bit of music. So I will see you on uh, the other side. And once I go over this article uh, and the special teams article, uh, I'm going to give my takeaways on the end of this video. Michigan football chatter, the defense in 2020. This was written by Brandon Brown. Uh, Brandon Brown uh, goes on with uh, Steve Dace on the Michigan podcast. Uh, this is dated October 12th, 2020. Don Brown is an aggressive defensive coordinator. And he'll have the horses to be that way in 2020 especially with the front seven. There are some question marks in the secondary, but there's talent there, just of the unproven variety. So in terms of the defensive line, the starting four up front is going to be as good as any group in the Big Ten. Junior defensive end, Aiden Hutchinson, senior defensive end, Quiddy Pay. Fifth year senior defensive tackle Carlo Kemp and sophomore defensive tackle Christopher Hinton will be strong, quick, and athletic up front for Don Brown. Throw in the potential contributions of a few others, and the unit is as deep as it's been in some time. Redshirt junior defensive tackle Donovan Jeter has been one of the biggest and best surprises along with the defensive line this offseason. I'm sorry, along the defensive line this offseason. The coaches are very excited about what the six foot three, 318 pounder can do, but they're not ready to anoint him just yet. Jeter was killing it last year in camp, and then he sort of fell apart. So the coaches are definitely approaching with caution, a source close to the program said. Don Brown went on and on about Jeter during a media session last week. So there's obviously high hopes there. If he can step up and provide legitimate depth, the trio of him, Kemp, and Hinton will be a lot to deal with on the interior of the defensive line. There's still some battling going on there behind the starting four, but it's a solid group. Don is going to feel a lot more comfortable with four-man fronts this year, our source said. So in terms of the linebackers, the linebackers are extremely solid too. Red shirt sophomore Cameron McGrone and red shirt junior Josh Ross are as good as any duo in the country and the potential of redshirt sophomore Michael Barrett at Viper is exciting to a lot of people. Our source is very confident in Barrett's ability at Viper and doesn't think there's actually much of a battler uh, of a battle there between he and sophomore Anthony Solomon despite Brown's comments about the young Floridian last week. Another player who received a lot of praise from Brown and will certainly see the field this fall is red shirt sophomore Ben Van Sumeren. The six foot two, 253 pounder is running in the four point sixes and really loves contact. Our source said that he's been standing out as much as any newcomer on the defense and should be able to do some nice things for the Wolverines this fall. He's not Josh Uche off the edge necessarily, but he's going to put some pressure on offenses, our source said. I'm not sure exactly where he'll be coming from, but he'll be coming. So finally, in terms of the secondary, the secondary is where the most questions are. 
senior Brad Hawkins and sophomore Daxton Hill are going to be great at safety. But there are quite a few unknowns at cornerback. Red shirt sophomore Vincent Gray has one spot locked up, but the other cornerback position is pretty open. Second year men DJ Turner and Jalen Perry are vying for the spot, but red shirt sophomore Gemin Green may end up winning the job. There's still so much competition going on in the secondary, our source said. Young guys like Andre Seldon and Makari Page are flashing often and the sophomores can really cover but I don't think much has been decided back there the front portion of the defense is still getting the better of the offense pretty consistently which is making it tricky to see just how good and prepared those guys are in the back end they'll be tested early against Minnesota who got a big shot in the arm with the return of first team all Big Ten wide receiver Rashad Bateman and quarterback Tanner Morgan. Brown is grizzled, experienced, and loves to send exotic blitzes. He's got the players to do so in the front seven and is hoping the cover men can do their jobs long enough for the pass rushers to be effective. We'll all get a chance to see how it looks in 12 days. So that article summarized uh, the defense. Uh, this article uh, up next is short and it summarizes uh, our uh, projected special teams. And I will see you on the other end with my takeaway points. This article is entitled uh, Michigan 2020 Spring Football Preview Special Teams. This is uh, from uh, the sports book nation, uh, Maize and Brew, uh, and it was written by Von Lozon. Uh, and I think the previous article I read in this video uh, was from Sports Illustrated, uh, the Brandon Brown, the Brandon Brown article. This one is short. This is from uh, pre-COVID, you know, it's March 13th. This was as the uh, lockdown was starting, but I don't think there's been as much attrition in the special teams group as there was um, for the offense and the defense in terms of players opting out and uh, deciding to go to the uh, NFL. So this reads, our Michigan spring <clears throat> football preview series comes to an end today as we will be talking about an intriguing area to watch in 2020 the special teams from the kickers to the returners there are several spots seemingly up for grabs a rotation at kicker uh, a punter coming back from injury and the starting punt returner leaving early for the NFL all make for interesting off-season discussion so let's take a closer look and see if we can make some predictions here who replaces donovan peoples jones the only starter gone is donovan donovan peoples jones who was the lead punter who was the lead punt returner his three seasons at michigan during his time in ann arbor peoples jones returned two punts for touchdowns one in 2017 against Air Force and one in 2018 against Nebraska. He ended his career averaging 8.3 yards per return and uh, 20.1 return yards per game. So who will take his spot in 2020? Will it be Ronnie Bell who fielded eight punts last season or maybe it will be one of the incoming true freshmen who have speed in their game. Blake Corum, uh, Andre Seldon, AJ Henning, Roman Wilson, and Iman Dennis. If I had to make a prediction now, I would say one of the true freshmen earns the starting spot. I think Henning would be the best option, but Seldon wouldn't be a bad option either considering 
uh, he is an early enrollee. So in terms of the kicking game, this subtitle says a tale of two starting kickers. Going into the 2019 season, Chris Partridge announced Moody and Norton were in a heated battle at kicker and have even deemed them both starting kickers back in October. The kicker rotation was unusual and neither guy separated himself from the other. The two combined to make 72.3% of uh, the team's field goals. Moody went 6 for 9 while Norton went 10 for 13. Norton made just 1 out of 3 from 50 plus while Moody missed his lone chance. Every extra point was made except for Norton's after the first touchdown against Ohio State. So, who will actually start at kicker for Michigan this year? At this point, your guess is as good as mine. I wouldn't be shocked to see them continue their rotation, but I personally don't like seeing stuff like this. Pick a guy and move on. And then finally, here comes the battle at punter. Another position battle that will likely rage on into the season is at punter. Will Hart has been the starter for most of his time in the winged helmet, but Brad Robbins, who was the original scholarship holder of the two, got back into action late last year following an injury that has kept him out since the Outback Bowl on New Year's Day of 2018. Robbins tried to make the most of his four punt attempts against Ohio State. He averaged 42.75 punt yards, uh, I'm sorry, he averaged 42.75 yards per punt and unfortunately had one blocked. He had a long of 48 and landed one inside the 20 yard line. Overall, not a first game back, especially considering how long his absence was. Hart, meanwhile, averaged 44.25 yards per punt with a long of 61, uh, which was in two different games, and booted 15 balls more than 50 yards. He had a rough end to the year against Alabama, but given his experience and overall track record, the starting job will likely be his to lose heading in the new season. So this is, uh, oh, so there's one more section here. Giles running for miles. Another starting specialist back uh, for more is Giles Jackson, who had a pretty good year all over the field. He averaged 25.92 yards in his 24 returns. He even had a pretty memorable return to the house to begin the game against Maryland. I fully expect Jackson to continue starting at kick returner for Michigan. He got more playing time on offense as the season went on and he flashed uh, great potential with the ball in his hands. Whether he lined up uh, in the slot or in the backfield, he proved as a freshman he should get more opportunities and he will get them in 2020. Linebacker Michael Barrett was the only other Wolverine to return a kickoff last year, and he only returned two. If Barrett takes a starting job on defense, I'd imagine the coaches turn to someone else to be the backup option. Perhaps one of the speedy true freshmen on offense can wow the coaches enough and get a few kick return opportunities. It will be interesting to see if anything changes philosophically with Chris Partridge gone and Jay Harbaugh now serving as the full-time special teams coordinator. Harbaugh mentioned on John Jansen's podcast how nothing will really change, but there's plenty of time for that to develop. With most everybody coming back, even if there are battles to be won, the special teams should continue 
to be pretty good for Michigan in 2020. So regarding uh, the defense, uh, the strength is going to be the front seven, um, and the secondary is going to be young and unproven, uh, especially with the departure of players like Ambry Thomas. So uh, we're really going to need good play from players like Daxton Hill at safety, who was back there uh, and who was on the field uh, last year. Talent-wise, I think we're in good shape. Uh, we've got Quiddy Payback, we've got Aiden Hutchinson back, um, and they've been getting a lot of press. But the kid I really like and the kid who really stood out to me last season was Cam McGrone. Uh, that kid is aggressive, uh, he's fearless, and he has a, a real motor. So uh, watch out for him. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a Cam McGrone guy, and I'm buying the Cam McGrone stock. Um... So before I say what I say, what I'm going to say next, I want to salute and thank Kalik Hudson and Josh Metellus for their service to the program the last four years. Now that that's out of the way, I think what's going to be important for the defense this year is uh, to not do things that uh, will shoot itself in the foot. Kalik Hudson, I'm looking at you and that. Um, neutral zone penalty slash offsides infraction penalty against Ohio State last year where you lined up uh, in the neutral zone which moved Justin Fields and J.K. Dobbins in that offense further up the field which led to an easier score. I'm calling out you, Khalid Hudson. Yeah, so, so teams can't, you know, against the uh, the bully and the big boy on the block, you know, when you're the weaker team, you can't afford to have um, mental uh, breakdowns like that. And that was a huge mental breakdown. And, um, yeah, we can't, yeah, we can't, we can't have that. Um, and I think Don's going to have to figure out how uh, to not... You know, the offensive coordinators, they're always scheming. They're always looking for mismatches. But, and, and I'm not saying Josh Metellus wasn't a capable safety and he wasn't a talented safety. Um, these kids are playing. They qualified to be at the University of Michigan. They qualified to uh, get those scholarships and to be on the field. But Don's got to figure out how not to get safeties like Josh matched up against wide receivers like K.J. Hamler from Penn State. I know I keep bringing that up in my content, but that was a huge mismatch in that oh, in that uh, Penn State game. It was not Ohio State, it was Penn State. Um, and it was literally just a go route that um, that Penn State quarterback threw at K.J. Hamler, and Josh Josh couldn't stop that. So um, a, lot of, a lot of how this defense does is going to be um, predicated upon how Don coaches that we know he's going to do his viper. We know that um, the the defensive backs are going to be on islands for the most part. But Don's going to have to show a level of flexibility, I think. Um, and I hope that he's learned his lesson from the revenge tour Ohio State game. So I think it's going to be uh, a strong defense as long as it doesn't shoot itself in the foot. Guys, no untying of opponents' shoelaces like uh, we saw against the Buckeyes that, you know, no, we don't need that. We don't need all that, as Tony Stark said in Iron Man to uh, uh, Peter Parker. We don't need you untying opponents' shoelaces. It looks bad. It's a distraction. Uh, and I think we got a penalty for that and just go out and beat your opponent. Play the best you play the best way you can. Leave it all out in the field, but don't do stuff like that. Um, and then I think a recurring theme of my content is: no matter how well Don's defense plays, it will be a better defense if our offense is putting up points. Defenses are not designed. Um, 
to play the entire game. Um, and they're not designed to win the entire game, unless you have the 2000 Baltimore Ravens with Ray Lewis and uh, Tony Siragusa and Rod Woodson. Unless you have that, your defense is going to wear down, it's going to tire out, and, you know, if it's, if it's getting the other team's offense off the field and then its own offense fumbles the ball or doesn't make plays or keeps going three and out or if the, the kicker misses field goals, that's got to demoralize a defense. So, again, this defense is going to be as good as our offense and our special teams play. And if we can get production on the offensive side, uh, I think I think it's going to be good. It's going to be better for the team um, overall. The only thing I have to say about the special teams is, once again, the special teams, um, you know, we can't shoot ourselves in the foot. Going back to Khalid Hudson, I'm not beating up that kid. You know, that, that kid, he played hard. And again, these players have to have some level of talent and um, mastery even to just get a scholarship offer. But against Army, Kalik lined up in the, new, the neutral zone, which um, kept Army in that game. And then against Ohio State, on, in the punt coverage unit, Kalik lined up in the neutral zone, which gave Ohio State that first down and led to a touchdown for them, which... I think led to uh, the breaking of our defense. So, and and going back to my uh, Jay Harbaugh video, uh, Kalik had um, several punt blocks last year uh, and throughout his career. So he was just trying to he was just trying to do the right thing. He was just teeing off on the punter and he was just trying to get the advantage. But you have to do that in such a way that doesn't cripple your own team um, in the long run. And those two plays, if we had lost that Army game um, because of him, that would have been bad for everybody. And we know what happened uh, in that Ohio State game. Um, and I think that offsides on that punt was one of the momentum swinging plays. In addition to the missed extra point by Quinn Norton. So... I'm going to close this by saying that when you're the weaker team going against a stronger team and Ohio State is the bully on the block now, you can't afford to shoot yourself in the foot when you're playing against them. Michigan and pretty much every other team in the Big Ten is going to have to play a near perfect and flawless game to have a chance to beat Ohio State. So, I'm going to stop this here. Please let me know what you think in the comments section below. Please like this video. Please share it. And please subscribe to my channel. Shi Shi. That's Chinese for thank you. I'll say it one more time. Shi Shi. My postdoc lab was... Um, for the most part, Chinese. So I learned a whole lot of things about Chinese culture and language in that lab. And my postdoctoral advisor um, was a Michigan alumnus as well. So, uh, go blue in Chinese. Go blue the usual way. And uh, thank you for watching. And as always, remember that your attitude determines your altitude. Take care, and I'll talk to you the next time. Bye-bye.